Hey, what's up, guys? Um, this video is going to be about how to communicate with different devices using the I squared C communication protocol. Now, I'm willing to bet that if you're watching this video, you bought a device claiming to be a simple two wire interface or like a very easy to communicate with type device, and, and that was that might have been the selling point on the device. Well, I remember when I bought the DS1307 real-time clock module, it claimed also to be a simple two-wire interface. And I had uh, no idea what that meant. It, it didn't say I squared C or anything like that, at least on the module's data sheet. When I dug a little further, I did see that it was an I squared C DS1307 IC here. But anyway... I had no idea how to communicate with it whatsoever. There was nothing simple about it. Even reading the data sheet was complicated. And I, I gotta admit, this the, this DS1307 real-time clock can be a little tricky. But I've made videos on that uh, describing how to actually, you know, write to that, to the uh, time, memory, and all that stuff. But anyway, I wanted to make this video just to show you how to communicate generally using the I squared C communication protocol. And uh, I'm willing to bet that most of you are using an Arduino board, which is what I'm going to use in this video. But you could use a PIC, AVR, uh, Texas Instrument, any microcontroller that supports I squared C. Um, but I would recommend using a I squared C library of some kind. You know, like don't don't just try to bit bang the uh, signals. When what I mean by bit banging is, is when you have two digital pins on your microcontroller and you toggle them high and low to kind of emulate the uh, the actual data string. Um, you could do that if you really wanted to understand how I squared C worked, but I wouldn't recommend it for beginners. And you know what? This video is not about that. We don't care really about what I squared C is. We just want to get your devices talking. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I'll explain quickly what, what I have here. I have the, uh, like I said before, the DS1307 real-time clock. I have a Honeywell HMC23, let me pull it up here, HMC, no, HMC6352 compass module, which I got from Parallax, and I have two E squared, or E squared, or E proms, whatever you want to call them. There are uh, two non-volatile memory chips. And they're 256 uh, kilobytes each, meaning that's how many uh, bytes they can store on each of them. There are actually two here. I don't know if the camera can show that. Two little 8-pin hardware addressable chips, too. And I'll get into what that means later on. So let's uh, go ahead and hook all these up, and let's get them all communicating with the Arduino at the same time. I wanted to point out before uh, moving on is uh, what I, while I was thinking is that the I squared C is a simple two wire interface. It has a clock line and a data line, which on the Arduino are analog pins four and five. And if you go to the reference libraries, it'll tell you which one's which. But I can just tell you quickly here that the data or the clock line is on five, and the uh, data line is on four. I better check that real quick here. So I'll screw up. Yeah, data line is on four. Okay. So, anyways, all of the devices I have here are five volts. So I have my five volts in common on this rail here and then my clock and data on this rail. So all of the devices are communicating along this rail here, which is kind of cool. Um, and also I wanted to point out that the two-wire interface is a uh, open drain 
type interface, which means you need pull-up resistors. Now my real-time clock has these pull-up resistors built in, so you only need two of them, really, because you know as long as you're pulling them up somewhere, you're good to go everywhere else. Um, I think even the uh, E squares squared here, they I think they have the pull-up resistors built in. I'm not sure about that, but um, it, they might not be necessary. But you can just use like a 1K or 10K. I, I don't know what it is, but I'm sure they're spec'd out somewhere in the data sheet. Um, also, these E squared, I don't know if I mentioned, but non-volatile memory is, uh, what that means is that it's, it, it doesn't lose, you don't lose your memory after you turn the device off. So, like, you can put data in there and then remove power and then bring power back and the data is still there. It's kind of like a good way of thinking about it is like, you know, your variables that you declare in the beginning of your program for your Arduino. You know, that you could be storing values in there, working with that, you know, doing doing all kinds of stuff with those variables. But if you don't store those into an EEPROM, e you know, after you cycle power, all that data is lost. So that's what an E squared is. Um, and even some microcontrollers store their program memory inside of E squares, like uh, the propeller microcontroller. You need one of these in order to work with it. So anyways, everything's all wired up. Now we can go and check out the code. Um, the only thing I should tell you is that these EE squares have a hard, are hardware addressed, meaning there's A0, A1, and A2, and you can, you can pull those either down or up to zero volts or five volts, and then that's what determines what the address is. Um, just so you know, the first one here, the top one, I pulled all three of those address lines low, for the second one, I pulled the A0 high and A1 and A2 low. So, And then everything else, the compass and the real-time clock, have a built-in address that you have to look at the data sheet to find out what it is. Okay, let's move on to the code. All right, so now we can take a look at the code. And uh, you're going to be surprised how easy it really is to connect to devices over I2C. So... I'm going to go through the code line by line like I always do and also compare the code to how they tell you to do it in the uh, data sheets of these devices. So let's start off by uh, looking at this code and I'll put this up on my website. There'll be a link on the description to tell you how to get to this code. Okay, so uh, the first thing you do is include the library. Uh, you can do this by going down to sketch, import library, and we're using the wire library for I squared C. Or you can just type this in. You don't have to actually do this. It doesn't. It just pastes that line of code in there for you. The include that header file. Okay, so we do a little bit of variable work there. Um, we go right to our setup. Uh, wire dot begin starts the I squared C. Uh, serial dot begin. We're gonna we're gonna start a serial um, also window also so that we can uh, monitor what we're what we're doing with our I squared C devices because you might be asking yourself, well, you know that's great, you do all this code and you hooked it all up, but how do we know it actually worked? So we're gonna actually communicate to the devices, pull data out of them, and display it in a serial monitor window. Okay, and we're gonna do that at 9600 bits per second, right there. Okay, and that's all there is to the setup. Then we can go right into the loop. Uh, the first device we're going to communicate with is the compass. So let's take a look at the compass data sheet first. Okay, so if you go through this, the first thing you kind of want to look for is something to do with the address. Um, and what I don't like about this data sheet is they, they explain the address here. The default factory 7-bit slave address is 42 hex. Well, there's no such thing as a 42 hex for 7 bits, right? So, what they're telling you though is that they're tacking a bit on at the very the at the least significant bit, either being a 1 or a 0, and they explain that here. 42 hex for write operations and 43 hex for read operations. What I want you to do is ignore that. Pretend you didn't see that. What you always want to do with I squared C devices is scroll down until you see something like this like a timing diagram where they explain like how you should be writing to the device and you know to, to read and write or whatever now the Arduino is gonna handle the reading and writing portions like it, it, the, 
the Arduino library will tack that bit on for you. So the only thing you need to look at is the first seven bits you're supposed to send the device. Ignore the last bit. Okay? So what we have here is 0100001. That's going to be our address. If we put 42 hex on for our address, it wouldn't work. Okay? Now this last bit here is for, for uh, to indicate whether we're reading or writing to the device. Again, the, li the Arduino library handles that for us. So what we do is wire.begin transmission with this right there. And that is the same thing we just saw here. The first seven bits only. Forget about this last bit. Don't ever put more than seven bits in for your address. Okay. So we do a wire.begin transmission at that address. Then we do a wire dot send of an 8-bit number, or whatever, 8-bit value, whatever you want to call it. Now that is, this is different now. Now we, so the only time you're working with 7 bits is when you're calling out the address of the device. When you're calling out memory addresses or sending actual data, it's always going to be your standard 8-bit or, or a byte, right? So let's go in here. And this is the next thing you send is eight bits of data for your command of the compass. And if you keep going down, it kind of explains what those commands are. So you send a command here, any one of these things, and you could do all kinds of stuff with the with this compass. It's it's even has some internal memory to it. It's got uh, you know you can calibrate it, you can put it into a sleep mode, you know whatever. Well, all we care about at this point is actually just reading the rotation in degrees. So it says the command is a 41 hexadecimal. Okay, I see. I hate working with hexadecimal numbers. I, I prefer with devices like this to put send it in binary data. So if I go here and put in 41 as hex, right? 41, and then go to binary. Then there's my 8-bit number. Well, actually, they they left off the leading zero. So. It's zero one zero 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 whatever one, and you put that in there, and we're gonna work. Well, sorry, skipping ahead. You want to put that right here because that's our command. So first thing we do is the seven bit device address, then we send the command byte. Okay, wire dot end transmission. Now we're just gonna hang out for a second. We're gonna leave it at that. Then we're gonna do a wire dot request from of the seven bit address device address and we're we're going to request request two bytes and the reason you're requesting two bytes is if we go here we go to the command byte here since we did that we're going to get two bytes back response one byte and response two byte and it's this here is showing you the least significant byte data and the most significant byte data now think about it why would we need two bytes to display a value from 0 to 360. Well, one byte can only go to 0 to 255, so you need another byte on there to to uh, to display, you know, the rest of the values. So that's why you get two bytes back. But this is kind of a pain because you have to combine these two bytes to make a single number, right, from 0 to 360. And that's what I do here. I do a wired out request from the device, two bytes, hang out for a second, and then I do if wired out available is greater than zero. You know, this is kind of like receiving data from a serial uh, device. You know, your standard TTL uh, um, serial commands, whatever. But anyways, we get high byte, wired out receive, and low byte, wired out receive. And these are just variables I named. And then we do a bunch of math here to combine the high and low to create data. And you know what? I don't think it's just 0 to 360. I think it's 0, 0.0 to 360.0. So I think you get an extra bit of res a, a little bit more resolution. Uh, I think. I don't, I don't know. So you might want to play around with this too. This I probably did this math very in a very caveman style way. But whatever. Then we do a serial.print command. Compass equals and we print out the actual raw data we're getting. So if we open a serial window up and you can see compass is equal to 75, 74, 74, 75, whatever. Ignore everything else you see there. Those are the other devices and we'll get to that. So I'm just going to rotate this now and we should see it you know, increase and decrease. You know, I'm just rotating it around. 
And it'll go all the way around to 360. I just wanted to get it past that point. There we go. So you can get it around 360. Okay, so that's the compass. It's pretty easy to communicate with. I don't see any reason you'd have problems there. I guess the 7-bit address thing is kind of where you want to you want to focus your attention on because if you just put 42 hex in, yeah, you, that could screw you over. Okay. So now let's communicate with the EE proms. Now I have two of them hooked up, and remember they were hard dress, sorry, hardware addressable. So if I pull the data sheet up with these guys, you know, here's the data sheet, and they explain that the you know these A0, A1, and A2, that's that gives you some kind of means of addressing these things, so you could have more than one on your circuit. You know, so the compass came with a built-in address, so if, I guess you couldn't have two compasses on your circuit. Um, also, I just wanted to quickly mention, you have this WP, this write protect, and that's basically like a, a way of protecting your code, so you can tie that either high or low and uh, configure your device to be write protected, so like you can't write to the device, it's like a read-only EE problem. Okay, let's keep going. I want to get to, you, you guessed it, my timing diagrams. Here we go. So here, here's the, the, uh, the first, the address uh, byte as they're showing it. Um, and remember, we only care about the first seven bits, so they're telling you 1010 and then your chip select, which is what you did to these pins. You know, did you tie it low? Then it's a zero. If you tied it high, it's a one. So... Remember, my first EE prom was zero. Was uh, I tied all three of those pins to ground, so it's zero zero zero. So it's one zero one zero 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 zero. And then they're showing also the read write bit. But remember, we don't care about that. We only need the first seven bits. The Arduino library is going to handle the rest. So if I go down here to the timing diagram, well, it's not really a timing diagram, but it's just kind of telling you what what you should be doing. We do the slave address, and I'll show you that here, 1010000, one, zero, one, zero, 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 zero. and then right, and then we send it two bytes, and this is memory address. And I just wanted to go and show you that wrong data sheet. So it's saying address, high byte, address, low byte. Now it's the same exact thing as the compass. You know, we can't, we, you know, the, the EE prom is going to have a lot of memory address locations. You know, it's, it's pretty big. It can hold a lot of bytes in, in a lot of different memory locations. And that's what this is. So, you, so you've got the low byte and the high byte representing a single number. You know, some, somewhere in memory, this is your uh, memory address location. But what I wanted to do, by the way, is write to both of these EE proms. I want to write an actual sentence. I am number one. I want to write to the first one. The second one, I want to write I am number two. Now, each memory location can hold a byte of information. And a, and a byte can hold a character, 0 to 255. And a character is, you know, these ASCII characters. Anything on your keyboard can be represented in a byte. Even a space. So I am number one. And what I'm doing here is, what do, we, what do we have? We have eight characters there. So if we go down here, we go four, I is equal to zero and less than eight. So it's zero. So we're going to be doing address zero to seven, because if you just go through this, I'm going to leave the high byte zero, because I'm never going to go above 255. You know, so I'm going to go wire.send to the zero, and then when we, the next time we do this, one, two, three, all the way up to, to seven. We're going to do what we do. Okay, let's go back to this. So we do address high byte, address low byte, and then if you keep going, you send you then send your data. Oh, cool. See, the other thing too is I didn't really have to do this um this for loop. I just I just realized that in that timing diagram, I could have just kept sending the data or I could have sent the entire string, you know, it just kept going Wire dot send byte 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 byte. Um, so, anyways, what we're doing here though is sending the first, the first byte in that string i, then the space, then the a m. You know, it keeps going. But I'm just going through 
this entire thing and that this for loop only does this and it just goes through that and sends each character of that string to it and then that's how you write data to the EEPROM then to read data it's kind of the same thing you wired out begin transmission with that 7 bit address um, then you you then you send the high byte memory location then the low byte memory location and just like all of our other I squared C devices we do a wire dot n transmission and then do the wire dot request from that device address that 7 bit address and we're only going to request one byte of data so and we do this eight times and we're going to do it a serial dot print of whatever we get back wire dot receive of course in a character format so that it makes sense you know we get the i not just some byte number you know and we do that eight times and you can see that here i am number one and you guessed it i do it again for the other ee prom but i did want to point out one thing with the other ee prom i did if you remember I did make a zero um, five volts. I tied that to my five volt rail, so it's a different address. So it's one zero one zero 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 one here. So I do the same thing, except my device address is zero zero one, and you can see that I am number two. Okay, so now we can talk about the clock, which is a little tricky, but it's not too bad, as long as you kind of follow the manual or the data sheet it's, I wouldn't call it a manual by any means but as long as you follow the data sheet you should be okay with with uh, talking to these devices so there's there's a couple things we do here and I broke out the clock into subroutines you know because if if we set the time get the time and then print the time but you know we, we only set the time once and then you can sort of gray out that subroutine so it doesn't keep setting the time you know and then you can burn it again but it, it it'll keep the set time in your code so if you ever have to change your time again you're good um, so anyways let's go to the first subroutine here for setting the time and that's it okay so you can tell it's it's pretty easy stuff so let's go to the data sheet for the real-time clock here it is I bought a module so these was this was all wired up for me and good to go uh, we don't care about all this we just want to not work the thing keep going keep going keep going now you can probably again remember that you know we don't care we don't care about all this the, the, the hexadecimal address and I think they tell you that in here you know we're, we're just trying to get to that timing diagram that shows you how to read and write to the device and what we do with the address so here we go so here's it showing you how to write and and read from the device and again we only care about the first seven bits so it's the same thing with all these devices there it is first seven bits and that's what we do boom pop it right in there wire dot begin transmission then it tells you the next thing you need to do is send a word address to it um, and basically what this is 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 memory address location and I'm going up to this table here this table is the only thing you need to, to use for this device so I'm sending a zero to it to start at the first a memory address zero which happens to be the seconds and it's represented in, in kind of a goofy way. See so your bit zero, one, two, three, four, or five, six. You know they break it down so you send two two numbers to it. Rep, you know, so like uh, you know if the time is fifty five fifty five seconds, you'd have to send a five here and then a five here in that binary format. You know if you ever do have to set the time, make sure you're at zero seconds. You know make it easy on yourself. Um, same thing with minutes same kind of thing uh, with hours it's kind of the same thing you know this could be if you're in 24 hour format you'd be using these two bits like this and then defining a 24 hour and it's this could either be a one or zero and it, and it breaks all this down right here for you to what to set all these bits to to set your format you know if you want to be in the 12 hour format or 24 hour format or you know am pm 
all of that. So the hour bite here can be kind of confusing, but it's easy stuff. So what we do is there's send send to the first address, and then right after you send the address, you can start sending your data. And I just want to show you a quick thing, which is cool about this, is it's saying your data data n, so the data for that memory address, so which is seconds. But then if you keep sending bytes to it, it goes n plus one, which is the next memory address, which was minutes, remember? And then the one after that is hours. So we can just go seconds, minutes, hours, and then we can um, go right through this table and write to all those values. And if you go up here, you could go all the way down to year, and then you have you have some more stuff for control. I guess you could you know change the speed of this thing. You could even write to uh, onboard memory for like an alarm clock or or whatever you want to do. Or what I did was seconds, minutes, hours, and then I bailed out of it. So you can do that too. So you don't have to write to everything. You can just bail at any time. So wired out end transmission. And you can see my hour formats in kind of a goofy way. You know, I don't have a number there because, you know, again, it's that upper part of the byte's got a lot of uh, configuration stuff. Okay, so that's all it takes to write the time. Now let's get the time. And that's a separate subroutine here get the time. Wired out begin transmission with the device address, you know, the first seven bits again. Wired out send, this is the memory address, which is zero, remember the seconds. Wired out end transmission, okay? Then we take it, take a break for 10 milliseconds and then do a wired out request from device address, again, seven bits, and we're going to request three bytes, right? Seconds, minutes, hours. Seconds wired out receive, minutes wired out receive, hour out wired out receive. What's cool is, I mean, we could have just grabbed the entire table if we wanted. We could have just grabbed all of these bytes, you know. So, or we could have started here with 01 hexadecimal and just grab second or grab minutes. So you can grab data from wherever the heck you want and write data wherever you want. It's pretty easy. Okay, so we get the seconds, minutes, hours, and then remember, you know, you got you got to combine everything up. You got to do the hard math on it, um, and that's what I do here. So, you know, maybe a good challenge for you for you guys would be to actually figure out how to do all that again. You know, I'm gonna provide this code so you can see how I did it at least, which is probably a caveman technique. But uh, anyway, you know, that's that's how to work with the uh, the DS1307. Let's take a look at it, make sure that it works. And then I display seconds, minutes, hours. Okay, obviously this isn't the right time, but uh, you get the idea. And what's cool about the real-time clock that I have, it, it has a battery, so when you remove power, you know, it retains the time. Okay, so uh, that's it. That's the uh, I2C communication protocol. Hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching.